that we're going to fill a needle. I'm using this large twine because I want you to be able to see exactly what I'm doing. Okay. Whenever you draw the twine off of uh, your 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 ball of twine, your it's, it usually comes in one pound one pound sizes. Sometimes you can buy a quarter inch. You want to roll it off instead of pulling it off. You don't want to you don't want to pull it off the top because it puts an extra twist in the line. So what you want to do is you want to pull it off this way, and by pulling it off that way, it prevents it from getting so kinked up while you're while you're processing your your uh, your net as you're making it, because you're going to be wrapping it around this as a gauge, so that it controls how big the mesh is inside the net. Okay, the way that I load a needle is I take the end of the twine and I put an overhand knot in the end of it, pull it up tight. Okay, let's look at the needle real quick, and I'm going to talk about the needle. This is the body of the needle. This is the heel. This is the nose. This is the throat, the area, the, the open area is the throat, and the small needle in the center, center is called the tongue. So, what we're going to do, I pin the knot down on the needle, the body. I push on the nose so that the tongue is exposed. I pull the line down. I push the line, the knot on the other side. I pull it up. I take my thumb and I roll it over. I'm going to put it on the opposite side. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take and I'm going to put a half hitch on here and put it on the tongue and pull it down. Okay, this is going to secure the twine to the needle. Why? Well, Whenever you're tying your net, when you get so far from your needle, it keeps it from coming loose. It keeps it on your needle. It allows you the opportunity to take it off the needle when you want to take it off, instead of it just coming off and being a pain. Okay, So you take it, once you have it secure, put it through the heel, push the nose with your thumb, till the tongue is exposed, and then slide this around. Turn it over, bring it back, put it around the same way again. Bring it down, bring it over, down, over, down, over. And you just continue this until you get the amount of twine on your needle that you need or you think you need. Normally what I'll do if I'm going to do a new mesh that I'm unaccustomed to doing very frequently, I'll only fill my needle a certain amount, you know, just just so so what I think will work. Okay, once I get to that point, okay, then I'll take and I'll cut my line. Now, oftentimes people will take a lighter and they'll melt this. You just have to be really careful because in order to melt this nylon it's gonna be extremely hot and you can burn yourself. You can get second degree burn. You'll, you'll, you get that on you and you'll have a little white spot on your skin there. And uh, that's normally a second degree burn and it doesn't feel good. So if you decide that you're gonna melt the tip of your, your nylon, that's perfectly fine. Uh, I've not found it, find it to be uh, necessary. So if you decide you wanna take a, a little Bic lighter or whatever, and melt that. Just don't touch it. Let it cool off before you continue. Okay, so what I've done is I've made a loop of twine, same same number twine. Uh, normally I use a heavy because before I had discussed the fact that I make my nets out of number four. I always mark them with a sharpie inside the tube because when you take the wrapper off then there's no way to identify it. Now the more and more you work with it, then you'll be able to identify it by eyesight. But if you're not going to work with it an awful lot, then you want to just go ahead and mark it. Uh, mark it inside the tube. I do it on both ends. Uh, a lot of times, companies will actually put the number in there, but as you well know, that that adhesive over time uh, will loosen up and you'll lose that little tag. So what I do is I use the Sharpie. 
Uh, we had discussed about what a Sharpie for, is good for, and I marked the inside of my tubes with the number of the twine itself. Also, if you can see down in there, you can see the paper that came off the outside of the twine, okay? And you can see it's number four, okay? So, uh, it's a good reference on here. You can reference uh, the, the breaking strength of the nylon. Number four breaks at 30 pounds. So it's about a 30 pound test for number four. Now, when you put a whole bunch of these together uh, in, a, in a net, it makes a fairly strong net. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start making the net. So we made our loop right here. We make just make you a loop. Now, how you secure it is completely up to you on how you want to secure it. But what I've got is a two by four right here, and all I've got is some nails stuck in there. Now, I've seen a number of ways on YouTube, uh, a number of ways that people start their net. Well, nylon uh, netting is tied a certain way. And the water pressure and the way that the weight is applied on the webbing itself makes a lot of difference. So if at the very beginning of your net, if you're actually making the net sideways, which I've seen people do, uh, in time, that's not gonna, that's not gonna work out. Those knots are gonna come loose. They're gonna distort, they're gonna deform themselves. Now, what I use is a slip knot, and I know it, it seems like, well, a slip knot doesn't seem to be a good knot to use, but nonetheless, it was the way I was taught to use a slip knot uh, to start your net. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a series of slip knots. What I always do just to secure this nylon tip is I just go ahead and put me an overhand knot right in the end of that, okay? And what I do is I take my dowel and I have it, uh, it's gonna be my gauge, and I'm gonna take and I'm gonna pull this up and I'm gonna make me a knot about three quarters of an inch down. Okay, I'm gonna make a knot about three quarters of an inch down. And all I've done is pushed them through, brought them together. Now, this is something that you're gonna use throughout the net making process is you're gonna throw a loop over. Okay, this is a very simple process. You're gonna come around the loop that you formed here. You're gonna come down this way and you're gonna pull this across here and you're gonna lock it down, okay? You're gonna pull it tight, okay? This is non-bonded nylon that I'm happen to use here because this is what I have and I want to make uh, uh, the, the material that you're seeing, I wanna make it large so that it's, it's easy to see and uh, you, you, there's no mistake in what I'm doing. Now, anytime you take your, your gauge and you put it in, put it in, in the backside, okay? Now in this case, I'm gonna hold the gauge in this fashion I'm gonna pin this down here because I'm starting out, I want this to be at the apex of the dowel rod in the distance away from me, I want it here, okay? So I'm gonna come back through here like this and now I'm gonna make my, my second slip knot. So I'm gonna pin this down here. I'm gonna pull on my needle like so. And I'm gonna get me some more twine out, okay? I'm gonna flip it over the backside. Now I'm gonna go here and here, I'm not going to pick up any part of the old, the other knot that I, that I already made. I'm only going to pick up those two strands, okay? I'm going to take this, and I'm going to pull it down. And you notice I've got a little bit of an angle here. Not a lot, just a little bit of an ang angle. I'm going to pin this down right here. And I'm going to hold this while I pull this down. And I'm going to pull this up and pull it over. Pull it down tight right there, okay? I'm gonna do the next one, okay? I'm gonna start my next one, okay? Go over, like so. Come up this way through those two. Pull it down. And essentially all we're doing here is we're making slip knots. These are all slip knots, okay? We're gonna to continue to do this. We're gonna keep a little bit of angle here because what we're gonna do is we're gonna to try to grow the length of these to where 
when we make a full revolution, we're going to do 36 of these. And we're going to go all the way around, and we're going to, at that point, when we get all the way around, we're going to actually come in here, and we're going to join up with this spot right here. We're going to come into this spot right here. We're going to tie in another knot. Okay? And that's going to complete the revolution for each one of those. Now, any time that you may pull this loose, you always come in from the back side and up through the loop. Okay? Bring it across here. Okay? Just hold it in place. Do your next one. Come right here. Throw your loop over. Pick up the two. Come down. And snug it up. And you're going to continue this. I'm going to go a little faster. You're going to continue this. And I'm, all I'm doing is, is getting my tension right. Getting it just right so that when it comes down, it comes down smooth and clean. Okay. If you notice, it kind of hid behind it right there. I still want to get behind that. Come around over here like so. Okay. I want to pull this down because it came loose. I want to pin it down with my thumb. Pull it back over this way and lock it down. Okay, so if you notice from the first one to the last one we made, it's grown a small amount. Now, we've only gone five. That's actually six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that's six. Now, what I need to do is I need to make 36 of these. Once I've made 36 of these, then we're going to start, we're going to join the net. We're going to join these two pieces together. And what I'll do is I'll uh, come right back as soon as I get done with that. Okay, right now I'm at 16. And if you notice, we're, we're really getting at a heavy angle here. Now, if you decide to pull them off, just make sure that when we make the full revolution, that uh, none of them twist around the, tw the, the, the line there. We don't want to twist it around. We don't want these to, to roll over this way and actually start trying to tie them because it's not going to work out at all for you. But pick this up. If you're gonna if you're gonna knock them, if you're gonna take them off, come from underneath, come on top here, and do the same thing again and continue. I was at number 16. And this is gonna make number 17, and I've got a pretty good angle here on my gauge. That way, that way it starts to grow a little bit longer. So if you take the original. And you look at the one now, it's it's already growing, okay? Now, I need it to grow about that much, the, the length from the knot to the bottom of the loop here on the on the mesh, okay? So we want to we wanna just grow it a little bit. Okay, now we're at 36. So I'm going to go ahead and take these off. And I'm going to bring this. I'm going to make sure that it doesn't wrap around that line. I'm going to take this. Well, I'm going to go this way. I'm going to flip this over. Okay, we don't want any of this twisted. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come in here. We're going to get this this way. Now, we're going to change our hand position. We're going to put our index finger on the bottom here. Reason being is because whenever we get ready to uh, tie our knots, we want to make sure that we can pin it down properly and maintain uh, the proper tension. This is going to take a little practice, so uh, this is the hardest part. We're going to start to fly in Dutchman. Okay, so we're going to take this one here. We're going to pick it up. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this around my little finger here. Okay, I'm going to pull some tension on this. I'm going to put this under here, and I'm going to pin it down with my finger. Okay, now, when you're starting this, this is when it really gets kind of frustrating right here. Okay, so we want to 
throw a loop over. I want to bring this over here, okay? So in, in all the cases, what we're going to do, we're going to go around this way. We need to come up underneath here, but we have to go through this one here first, okay? We want to go through this here. We want to pick that up right there, okay? Pull this down like so. Get it all wrapped up. Pull it down till it touches the gauge, okay? Pull it tight. See, I'm still holding pressure with my pinky here, okay? And I'm going to hold pressure here now. It's still got, this is not tightened up yet. We don't want to relieve any pressure. We want to hold pressure here. And we want to pull this down until it locks in place. Now, what we've done is we've formed a sheet bend. That's a sheet bend right there. And that's what webbing is made out of. That's what netting is made out of. They, they use a sheet bend to connect it. And I was talking about the knots before. If this sheet bend is laying sideways at the top of your net, the pressure is wrong and it's going to cause it to distort really bad. And then your top of your net's not going to look so, so good. Okay. So we've produced the sheet bin. And what we've done is we've closed the loop. We've closed the loop at this point. It's joined together. So as we make the net, we're going to go around in a circle all the way to the bottom. Okay. Now, as we progress on, we're going to do this again. We're going to go around the pinky, behind the gauge, pin it down with your finger, okay? The very next available mesh is right here, okay? So what we want to do is we want to throw this over, make sure it's thrown over, come under the one that's closest to you around your pinky, come here, go through that loop, making sure that this loop is in place. If it falls down, when you get to this point, pick it up and put it back over the top, okay? Make sure you maintain tension here. Maintain tension underneath your, your gauge. Come up. Pull this through. Make sure this all clears because this is the... It's kind of the hardest part of the net uh, having to deal with how bunched up it is. But as you progress, this, this will kind of go away. Okay, so we're going to hold tension here. Till we pull this up, you're going to feel this little knot right here. If you can see it, the little lump, it's going to actually pull up. You're going to feel it with the, with the finger here, with your index finger right here. You're going to feel that lump move up. You're going to release the pressure from your pinky, and you're going to pull that up, and it's going to, it's going to snug it down. You're creating a lot of friction right here, okay? So your tension, just be careful. Don't, don't over... Uh, Put too much pressure on it because you don't want to burn the nylon because nylon creates a lot of heat pressure when it's sliding against itself and it'll actually cut itself. Okay, so we're going to do it again. We're going to come around the pinky. We're going to come to the back of the gauge. Okay, we're going to have our loop over there. We're going to come in here. The one closest to me on this side of the pinky. I'm going to come up this way. I'm going to pick up the next available loop for the mesh. Next available mesh, I'm going to come up, make sure all that's untangled, pull down, and once that lump goes up underneath my finger, I'm going to release the pinky, and I'm going to draw down on the mesh. Okay, so this is where we're at, right here. We've gone from the slip knots here. Now, with all the years that I've been making these cast nets and this, that, and the other, uh, it's pretty common in the Texas Gulf Coast for cast nets to be started this way. Now, how they are in Louisiana, Mississippi, Georgia, so on and so forth, I really don't know. But the thing about it is, is in, in Texas Gulf Coast here, the Flying Dutchman is a common uh, use knot uh, for the older net makers. The newer net makers, they're not using the Flying Dutchman, and they're not producing real good nets. Okay, so let's go ahead and try that one more time. We're going to come around, we're going to go here, and go this way, go through here, make sure it's tangle free, okay, help it along, and then pull it up. When you feel the lump come up underneath your finger, release the pinky, maintaining pressure here, 
and draw it down. Okay? And that's the Flying Dutchman. It's pretty frustrating uh, to try to learn this and try to get the tensions right. But if you work with it and you practice, uh, your first net, uh, it'll be okay. Uh, if you're a perfectionist and you just keep it going, then, then it'll be a beautiful net. But I guarantee you, as you build your net and you continue this, it'll be a beautiful net. It'll come out beautiful. It'll work perfect, you know, and it'll last you a lifetime if you take care of it. The webbing, uh, in making the webbing, it's the most arduous process of the entire net making process here because it takes a long time to make your webbing. It takes a dedicated person to sit down and be able to make the webbing from start to finish, whether it's a three-foot net, a six-foot net, or whatever. Uh, and you notice the mesh. The mesh are not real large here, even though uh, I'm using this heavy twine. I'm still making a, a fairly small, small mesh size compared to what uh, somebody might make in uh, Florida or whatever for your, for your mesh size. Okay, I added another needle to this because I was running out of twine because this is a small needle and uh, it only holds so much. So what I did is I added another one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to add another needle in a few minutes. But as you're going, uh, what you need to do is you made your first round and then you joined up and you started going to your next mesh down. In other words, when you joined them both together to make a, a solid piece of webbing, uh, you, you're going to continue around. Now, because, because this is so cluttered, what I want to do is I want to take this off of here, just, just twist this right like this, and it'll come off. Just kind of unscrew it. Okay, so I'm going to come underneath... I'm going to get it like so, and I'm going to continue to go. I'm going to continue until I get all the way back around to where I started to begin with uh, whenever I joined them together. So I'm just going to drive on, and I'm going to go all the way around one time so that I have a set of webbing that's that's started. Okay, I'm only going to go so far, and then I'm going to drop it all off of my gauge again so that it's easy to deal with. I'm going to continue to go. Now, whenever I come back around, see, you can see where the two pieces of twine, they come together. You can tell this is where... We went from the slip knots to the sheet bend to make the first mesh. And what we've done is this is what we've produced. So what we want to do is we want to go all the way around. And we want to come back around to this again as we're tying it in. Now, once we tie into this one, okay, we're going to have a transition. So uh, we're going to have a transition from, from here into the original webbing that we started with our slip knots at the top. What we're going to do is put, uh, it's more commonly known on, on the internet as a widener. And what we're going to do is I'm going to show you, once I get here, I'm going to show you how to put a widener in here so that the net will lay perfectly flat. And every three, er, er, we're going to put in a, a widener. We call them spacers. We're going to put in a widener. We're going to go three, one, two, three. And then we're going to put a widener. One, two, three. And then we're going to put a widener. And, and I'll show you how to do that. As soon as, we, as soon as I get all the way around, I'm going to go ahead and tie these off, off camera. I'm going to tie them off. And I'm going to get to the beginning of, of where I started. Okay. I'm back at... Uh, the point where I started uh, whenever I made the joint, when I came from this side, the last uh, 
slip knot over to the to, to form the first mesh. I'm almost there. Let me get that to that point. Okay. I'm gonna pull these to where it it's more balanced. I'm gonna pull these together so that it's more balanced here because of the amount of pressure that I have right here, okay? Because this separation is not normal in the pressure whenever you're tying your net, okay? So what we wanna do is we wanna to try to equalize that pressure. When we come down, we want this to be, we want this to be equal, okay? So we're gonna pull this down and get that so that we try to get it as close to the middle as possible. It's not real close, but it's close enough right there. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and pull that down. Okay, now, I talked about the wideners a few minutes ago, and uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna come around and we're gonna do a widener. A widener is essentially a slip knot, okay? But what it does when you put your wideners in here, what it does is it allows the net to lay perfectly flat. We've gone 36 uh, mesh or 36 uh, slip knots around the top, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here. We've made one round after we did our slip knots. We, we made one additional round. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up between here because there's one knot right there. We're gonna come between here, but we're not gonna use the Flying Dutchman. We're gonna use the same technique that we used before to make our slip knots because that's what we're going to do is we're going to make another slip knot. A widener is a slip knot. Okay. So we're going to put that through there, through, through that, that mesh at the top where the slip knot is at. We're going to put that through there. We're going to pull it to where it's tight, not super tight. Don't over pull it. You want to pull it just to where it's, it's, it's going to have the same length as the, the mesh. Okay. Throw it over, come back in, make sure you're holding pressure here. Pull this through, make sure that it's, it's equal in pressure. And what you've done is you've, you've put a widener in there and what it's gonna do is it's gonna add a, a one mesh to that one spot right there. It's gonna add one mesh. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go, we're gonna Go back to the Flying Dutchman, and we're going to do three. Okay, so that's one. That's two. And this will be three. Okay. Okay, so we've put in three. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drop all this off the, the gauge because the net's so small right now that I, I don't want to fight the net. Okay, so I'm gonna drop it off. I'm gonna put the gauge back in from underneath. I'm gonna pick it up. Remember, we just put three Flying Dutchman technique. We put the sheet bins in there using the Flying Dutchman technique and we, used, we put in three of them. Okay, so now we're gonna come up here. We're gonna open this up. We're gonna go right above the knot, which is next in line. We're gonna go above that knot. We're gonna come down here. We're gonna put that loop in there, that half, that, uh, that slip knot. We're gonna put it right there, okay? Make sure we get it pretty even. Make sure there's no tangles, okay? Pull that down and then pull that up, okay? So we put another widener in there, okay? We're gonna go three more. Flying Dutchman technique, that's one. That's two, and that's three. Okay, so we're gonna put in another spacer here, another uh, widener. Go above that knot right there, go through here, pull it up, we're gonna put that slip knot right there. Okay, get both, both parts of it, go up, untangle, get it squared away there, pull it down and do it. Okay, so 
what's going to happen is, is I think we've already put three in here. We've put one, two, three. Okay, so ultimately, we're going to do it every three, every three hangings, every three uh, mesh, we're going to put one in. So by the time we get back around to this other side, back around to the starting point again, as you can see, you have a spacer right there, a, a, a widener. You have one right there. Okay, so when we get here, we don't need to think about putting another one. What's going to happen is, is once we get here, we're going to go around the net two times. We're going to go around the net two times. And when we go around the net two times, it's going to create this same uh, uh, situation here to where we'll be able to put a spacer directly below this spacer. So we'll have a knot here, a knot here, and a knot right here. And on our second round, we'll be able to come back in there and put another spacer directly below that. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll work this around until it's time to start the spacers. Okay. One of the things that you can do so that you don't miss a spacer is you can take a piece of twine, a small piece of twine, and cut it. Okay. If you have a piece of green, like uh, say you already bought your, your say you're going to use size 18 twine, and uh, you're going to use that for your braille lines for your drawstrings. This one here, what you can do is you can take this little fine piece right here, and you can use a Sharpie and turn it black. So what you're going to do is you're going to make yourself a marker. You can take this, and you can put a girth hitch just right here. Just put your little girth hitch. And all you're doing is making yourself a marker so that you know approximately where you're, or you know exactly where you're going to uh, start your spacers. Okay, so now you've got this little flag here so that after you make two rounds and you see your flag there, every time you come up to your flag, always look to see if you need to do a spacer, okay? Now, as you're doing your spacers, as you note here, uh, I said that you're going to add a mesh, and that's what that created. That creates an additional mesh. So what that means to you is, is that you've done three knots and you've done another one. So if it adds a mesh, that means the next time you come around and you put a spacer, that means that it'll be four knots before the next spacer. It'll be four knots before the next spacer. Okay? So you do it again. You make two more rounds after you finish your spacers. You do two more rounds after that. And there's going to be five knots between each spacer. So your marker, just just to mark where you're going to start your spacer. It's just a flag to let you know. I mean, if you can keep track of it, you don't need to put a marker in it. But I always put a marker so that no matter what I'm doing or what I'm thinking, it's kind of like mowing the grass. You know, you got a thousand things you can think of while you're mowing the grass. But nonetheless, it's the same thing when you're doing this net, the same thing. So whenever you see it coming around, and you'll actually move that spacer down. I mean, this, this marker, you'll move it down as the net grows longer and longer and longer. And it always flags you to let you know where you're going to have your next uh, starting point on your spacers, on your, on your wideners. Okay? Okay. Uh, what I've done is I went ahead and made... An, the, the rounds. Here's my marker. I've got my marker here. Now, I've got to this point and I'm going to continue around. Now, if you notice, here's the first widener that we put in there. And the first widener, you can see there's now a knot underneath it. That was after the first round. I still have to go one more round. And then when I tie a knot right here, then I'm going to come in and I'm going to put a widener here and it'll put it directly below the first widener. And then I'll go four, one, two, three, four, and then there'll be another one under the next widener. Okay. So I'll, add, I'll have the four uh, flying Dutchman technique.
knots that I put in, and uh, then I'll do another spacer. And your net is going to continue this way until you've made it as long as you want the net to be. In other words, you just measure from here to the bottom of this, and uh, you got to figure, uh, depending on your mesh size, you can calculate how far to go to, to when you add your lead line, how much more you have to go in order to uh, uh, achieve the length that you want, three feet, three and a half feet, four feet, four and a half, five, five, six, whatever, whatever length you're actually looking to make in your first net. What I recommend uh, for a first net is to get a 3 8 inch dowel rod, uh, get you a needle about this size. It's a half inch wide, six inches long. Get you some number four, put a whole bunch in it, you know, get it, get it pretty good size around, and then go ahead and do your uh, 36 mesh or your 36 slip knots around a piece of twine. You want to use a heavy twine so it'll last through the duration of it constantly rubbing on, on various things where it's anchored and stuff like that when you're doing it. Uh, do your 36 mesh and then uh, connect them. Uh, sometimes I actually take and I'll put a knot right here, just throw an overhand knot right here, and it'll help join that, that area where the junction is, where they come together. If you put a knot right there, it'll hold them together. Okay, so so your transition is 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 smooth and easy uh, by adding that in there, and uh, make sure you put in your flag and so on and so forth. Uh, but you'll continue this until you get to the bottom. Now, what I'll do is I'll show you how to uh, add a needle, and by adding a needle. Uh, that's without putting any of these little overhand knots anywhere in your in your net, and you don't have to burn the end of your nylon because it's 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 cut real snug to the knot, okay? And there's you got double line in there. You can see right here where I added the needle in earlier, so that I could continue on. And apparently, the size of the needle that I'm using and the twine that I'm using. It's only allowing me to go just a little better than one round around this net at this point. Uh, and normally that's not the case. Normally you can go f quite a few inches down, you know, a lot of rounds around it before you have to refill a needle. Uh, and then when you get toward the bottom, uh, you might make one round uh, on a four-foot net with one needle. Uh, your webbing, uh, whenever you start it, uh, on your first net, I recommend that you, you leave it this way and have a single single twine. On your next net that you make, double out your twine and put your twine in here in a double, in a double technique, like so. So what it's gonna do, it's gonna give you double the twine, each twine, your, your twine's gonna all be doubled all the way down on your first needle. And then go to single. I'll uh, I'll show you that in a in a in a net here in a minute. Okay, I'm going to show you real quick uh, how to add in a needle. Uh, what I've got here is I've got my ball of twine that I'm using as my example netting, and uh, I've got uh, the line pulled out. I filled the needle. It's still attached to the roll. So, in adding this needle, what I want to do is take the uh, previous line, which I've got plenty of room so that I can tie at least two knots in the net with this. So, I'm going to take, and I'm going to kind of use the same principle. Uh, I'm going to put this around here. I'm going to pull this over. It's kind of, because it's non-bonded, it's, it's not cooperating too well. I'm going to put this around here, and I'm going to put my little half hitch in there like I always do, and pull that down, pull it snug. Now, what I have is, is two lines attached with this. This line's going over the top, and I'm going to take the new line. I'm going to take the new line and lay it across the top as well, and I'm going to 
pull everything tight so that they both have the same amount of tension on them. Then I'm going to take and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do my Flying Dutchman. I'm going to take both lines, do it this, this way, under the pinky, up through here. I'm going to come up and I'm going to tie one in there. Okay, I'm going to do one more. I'm going to go up, go over, come up through, and I'm going to do my second knot. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this off, and I'm going to lay it down. So now I have my needle is now attached in the webbing with that knot with the last knot that I tied there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go one more, bring that down using the Flying Dutchman. I'm gonna go ahead and take this off of here. I'm gonna take my knife. I'm going to take the short piece that was on the, the needle a few minutes ago. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna cut that off. Now I'm going to come over here, the one that's attached to the spool, I need to go ahead and get that out of here too. I want to make sure that I cut the correct one. We don't want to cut the webbing. We want to cut that right there. Now what do we have? Right here, you see we've got double lines in our mesh. So that means we have a knot here and a knot here that's integrated in the net. So when I come in and I put another knot down here, this joint that I put in here just now when I change needles, this joint is now tied in with three knots and no additional knots that uh, someone may feel that they need extra knots in there to secure this line together. That's not necessary. Uh, it makes it smoother, it makes it cleaner. So whenever you get ready to tie in, you're going to put that third knot down in here so you actually have three knots on that new joint. Okay, I'm approaching uh, the next set of spacers here because we're here now. I'm coming up to it now and uh, I'm going to be uh, putting a, a, a widener right in right here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of make this a little bit easier. I'm going to take the line that I've been using uh, to make the net, I'm going to just throw an overhand in here so that it brings these two pieces together so that they're, they're actually hanging on that twine a lot closer together. Just throw a little overhand knot in there so it enables me to, uh, to hold the webbing tighter right there at that junction point where we actually uh, went across when we joined them together. Put it back on my nails. Took up some of the slack. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and uh, do these two, I think. Two knots until I start the next widener. Okay, right here, as you can see, right here is where the next widener goes, directly underneath the original widener that we started it all off with. So we're going to go ahead and you can reposition your hand, go up through the webbing directly below the spacer there, come here, only pull down enough tension to where it's not pulling that knot down, you want to keep it so that the knot has the full movement and use in the process of where it's expected to actually work. So we're going to take and we're going to pull that up, put that spacer right there. Okay, now your next spacer is going to be four knots away. So that's one, two, Three, four, 
four. There it is right there. It's four. If you make a mistake, your numbers can go off. You don't want to make a mistake in here. You always want to track everything you're doing. My, uh, my little marker that I had put on here originally, I took it off because I used a Sharpie to make it black. So I'm going to put it right back on here in a second. Okay, that next spacer's in. So what I need to do is I need to go four more, and then I'll have another widener spacer put in right there. And so that way the net continues to come out. If you notice, the net looks a lot better. And I'm moving further and further away from the top, which creates a lot of chaos when you're trying to start your net. That's the hardest part in starting your net. If you're using this number four uh, in making your net, it's a lot smaller. It's a lot easier to work with. So as you can see, I got a marker right there to let me know where my spacers start. So I'm going to go ahead and put my marker back in here so that I don't lose track of what I'm doing over here on this. It's my first spacer right there. So I'm just going to take this marker and throw this marker in here so that as things progress, I'll know and be flagged by that black marker uh, on this white webbing. Uh, you can use the green as well if you want to use a green. Okay, I'm going to give you a little perspective on uh, the way that the uh, connections that I have at the top there to secure the netting. I just got a small piece of twine. It's doubled over because I used a, a little smaller twine for uh, for my, I guess, ba basically your your anchor twine or whatever. Uh, this, I, I, what I've done is I've put the small, uh, a smaller webbing net in here. And I'm going to show you uh, a little more perspective on how much smaller it is when you're actually using number four twine. Uh, I need to verify that I'm not on a spacer round. I am on a spacer round. So I don't know how many uh, how many hangings there is between each spacer in this case. So I'm going to go ahead and count them. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's eight after I do this one, which is only like three or four away. But I'm going to give you a, a perspective here on... Uh, looking at it and, and, and you'll better understand why I, I'm, I'm using this larger material here to show you how to do it because this is going to be difficult for you to see uh, and and be able to actually track what I'm doing here uh, this is actually easier for me to do but it's harder for you to see so that being the case uh, I've I've done this in a much larger mesh, uh, I'm sorry, much larger twine. So I'm going to go in and do a spacer here, a uh, widener, whatever you want to call it. I, I, I was raised up calling it a spacer, so it's kind of kind of new to me to be calling it a widener. And that's trying to get into, to uh, I guess, mainstream on what more people are calling it on the internet. And uh, if you're interested in cast nets, my guess is that uh, you've already seen a couple of the other videos that are out there. And that being the case, then uh, you might be more accustomed to their lingo. So it's, uh, it's really easy to do this. Uh, the twine is very small, very easy to work with, uh, makes life easier. I'm on a widener now, right here. Now, if for some reason you pass this up and you don't put your widener in place, the problem there is, is the net is not going to want to lay as flat as it could. So my recommendation to anybody that is working, making a cast net, if you miss that and you don't get it put in and say you go six, eight knots past it and then you realized, oh, I was on, on my wideners, so just go back and untie these. 
And because this is bonded twine, like I told you, they're almost cemented together, you know, so you may have to chew on that or get you a pair of tweezers or whatever and, and pull on it gently to, to untie it. And then just to untie them and then come back and, and uh, fix that problem. Uh, put your widener back in there. I'm gonna go through real quick and I'm gonna show you how to measure your net uh, because when you make a net, you need to make sure that, first of all, that the net is legal to use in your state or wherever you're at. Uh, also, your your regulation lengths, if, they, if there's any lengths. Now, if you're using it on private property, uh, most states don't have a problem with you using them if there's any restrictions from the, from the states, the, the, the game commissions or whatever. But uh, normally, the way that I measure them, I just put it right there at the top of the webbing, bring it down here to the bottom of the webbing, and I measure it out, okay? So I've got about, I can't pull it very tight because I don't have it secured, but I've got about 35 and a quarter inches, or maybe, I don't know, 34 and three quarters, something like that, uh, on my measurement here, and this is uh, gonna be a three foot net. So by the time I put the lead line on it, it's going to add a little more length to the end, at least three quarters of an inch. So your uh, Parks and Wildlife or whoever manages your game, uh, if they measure a net on the radius, then they're going to measure from the thimble down to the lead line. If, like in Texas, they measure diameter, they'll measure it from lead line to lead line as it's stretched out, and that's in a stretch mesh. Stretch mesh is a measurement in this way. Uh, it's, it's laid out. They're not going to lay it out in a circle and then measure it. They're going to pull it to where your mesh is, is stretched out. Uh, check with your game commissions, uh, uh, whoever, reg whoever your regulatory uh, authority is, and find out exactly how they go about uh, measuring cast nets and if, if they're legal for you to use. Now, on this net here... Uh, we were uh, only eight hangings between our spacers. On this one, I don't know exactly how many it is, but this net is completed. Uh, and all you do is the exact same technique from, from the top to the bottom that you used here. Uh, I'm going to cover uh, double twine, double twine on your net. I don't recommend that you do it initially, and the reason being is because making your first net, it's kind of difficult to go in there and use a double twine as you're tying it. I recommend on your first net that you don't use the double twine at the top or at the bottom, and the reason being is because it's more difficult, it's harder to do, and your whole objective in making your first net should be to learn the techniques and get it down to where uh, it's, it's not an issue. And when you do double this up, what'll happen is in your mind, when you double it up, you'll know exactly how to deal with it because you've had to deal with all this tying through the entire setup of your net to begin with on your first net. So when you go in and you do your double lines, uh, it, it doesn't appear to be that much of an issue. It'll be a little more difficult but you're already, you already have this part down if you've gone this far. Fill the needle, and I'm gonna, I filled it with a single strand, and I'm gonna show you one of the best ways to learn initially uh, how to uh, put in double twine on your, on your needle. So once you've filled it to the capacity that you're gonna use it at, go ahead and undo all the twine, making sure that uh, you keep one end free uh, where you can locate the end of it out here. Just push it away from the pile so that it's easy to find. And go ahead and unwrap all of this twine from the needle. I'll be right back. Okay, now that you have all your twine off of your needle, Go ahead and grab the end 
that uh, you needed to keep track of. And what you're going to do is you're going to repile this, or if you go outside and put you a nail in a tree or a nail in a fence or something like that, you can take and run it all out to the halfway point, or like I'm doing right here in the shop, is I'm making me another pile off to the side of the original pile, and I'm holding the two, two pieces together. And by doing this, I'm gonna find the halfway point in the middle of this twine. So when you get it all pulled up to where it's got just a single loop here, just take that single loop, put it over the tongue in your needle like so, and then take that and then just refill your needle the same way you would with a single twine. And now you've got double twine in there. If you decide that you're gonna go ahead and start with double twine, this is how you're gonna go about doing this. Uh, as I recommend before, uh, it's best that you just try the first go at this with a uh, single twine. And uh, once you get that down, and once we've gone into repairs on damaged nets and things like that, which I'll do later on in another segment, and we'll uh, be able to, uh, if you need to, if you absolutely want to, you can cut the top off your net and put a new, new one like uh, the one similar to the to my rat nest net that I had to replace the entire top because everything was chewed out near the thimble. When you have it all done, uh, both end pieces will be fairly close to each other. If you want, you can trim them, but you don't really have to. You can just use it the way that it is. 